Hey, it's Lila. In this video, we're going to talk about why we need more badass female miniatures and the over-sexualization of the female form in the hobby. For as long as I've been painting, I have known I wanted to paint badass female miniatures. And even before I started, I knew that finding non-sexualized female miniatures was going to be a bit difficult. But before we get too far, I want to cut some drama off at the pass. One, it's okay to paint sexualized female miniatures. I paint them too. I am not here to ruin your hobby. Two, there are so many wonderful people who are part of this community who already know and understand what I'm going to say. And I want to thank you for the support that you have given me as well as the support I know I will be receiving from you in the future. Okay, we good? Let's move on. Now you might be wondering why I bother to bring up this topic in this hobby. And the thing is, is that I just want options. There are so many female miniatures that were obviously sculpted to be ogled, as well as less obvious, but still prominent sexualization of the female form. Maybe they have swords, maybe they have armor, but sexuality is still an inescapable part of the sculpture. This trend implies that men are the only one who are going to be doing the looking and that women are subservient to them. And I hear you, but Lila, there are scantily clad male models. What about them? But here's the thing, shirtless women and shirtless men are not the same thing. Scantily clad or topless male models are sculpted with rippling muscles, swords at the ready, this heroic expression on their face as they stand before or over their prey. We see these models as independent. We identify them as strong and brave, but most importantly, we identify them for what they can do for themselves. They can be sexy, but the main appeal is not based on their sexuality. Of course, some models are worse than others. With large breasts barely covered by tiny bikini chainmail armor, high heels and wasp waists, with looks of sultry allure or worse yet, looks of confusion or fear. These models are designed to titillate and excite. And most importantly, such miniatures ask what she can do for you, not what can she do for herself. But even the better dress models can suffer from this same fate. When she's done fighting, when she's off the battlefield, the question remains, what can she do for you? This is not to say that male models sculpted for female eyes don't exist, or that there are no female models designed to look like they can realistically handle themselves. However, the ability to name a handful of examples does not help with the systematic problem at hand. What does overly sexualized look like? Note that this isn't a scientific topic, and some of you may not agree with me about what category a model falls into. It also matters to how you paint the model and what context you can build in for this model based on any sort of base that you might include with this figure, as well as a bunch of other factors. But I want to give you some guidelines to help you understand how to examine female miniatures. Number one, if you substituted a man for a woman in this exact pose, in this exact armor, same facial expression, would it be weird? If they look like they're strutting down a runway, or are lounging seductively in the gaping maw of a dragon with sheets perfectly covering them in all of the right places. If you put a man in those elements, would you still recognize that man as strong and independent? To be a little more specific, consider the following questions. Does the figure suggest that sexual availability is the defining characteristic of the model? Does the design remove the individuality of the model? For example, is she wearing a mask? Or is there a cage over her head? Or a hood or hair in front of her face that is removing her identity? Were artistic choices taken specifically to objectify them based on their sex? Let's talk about this for a second. This covers a lot of models that otherwise might not be considered overly sexualized. But here's the thing, when so many models are just a little sexy, it becomes overwhelming. With their armor cut out to show cleavage, again, wasp waist, 
high heels. The entire category of female miniatures becomes over-sexualized. It's okay to paint sexualized female miniatures. If you know me as an artist, you know that I paint sexualized female models. I started making a name for myself by painting Kingdom Death. Some of these are commissions, some of them are just because they're really cool. And after all this, you might be wondering why I paint such models if I'm so against them. And the thing is, is that I'm, I'm not, I'm not against sexualized female miniatures. I'm not saying that they don't have a place in the hobby or in gaming. I'm not saying that you're guilty if you have painted sexualized female models. What I do want is options. When I'm playing video games, I want choices beyond playing a gorgeous bombshell where they all look basically the same minus their outfits, weapons, and makeup. When I'm looking to paint a new 52 or 75 millimeter model for some display piece I want, I want to be able to find more than just the one female model who doesn't have her cleavage showing. Being sexy can be fun and empowering. My first D&D &D character was a cliche horny bard, and she wore boob armor the entire campaign. But for my current D&D campaign, I am playing a paladin, and I had a heck of a time finding a normally proportioned, non-sexy model for this character. If you don't want to paint well-clad female miniatures, that's totally fine. You do you. As long as you can separate the sexualization of the female form in models from sexualizing women in life, then you're going to be doing okay. But unfortunately, not everyone can do that. This topic has impacted me as a YouTuber and as a woman in general, but as well as a woman in the hobby. First, I want to start out by saying that my community is wonderful. I'm surrounded by community and crafters and painters and other YouTubers who have done nothing but make me feel welcome and are excited that I'm here as well as make the space welcoming for all other hobbyists as well. And so I want to take a quick moment and give a shout out to all of you saying how much I appreciate you. But there are some people who are not like that, who think that women don't belong in this hobby or using the fact that they are a woman against them if they don't agree with you. And this stems from the idea that men ogle and women are less than. Personally, I have only had a few negative experiences in the hobby, but after speaking with other women crafters and hobbyists and YouTubers and other women in the gaming realm, it is clear that I am an anomaly. I have received comments on sponsored videos along the lines of, you're going to need to pay her more if you want her to show her boobs on camera. I have been told that I should give up on painting because all of the painting techniques have already been covered. Instead, I should upload videos where I more actively present my cleavage. My point being that receiving only the small amount of negativity makes me a lucky one. Most of you would never say something like that to me or to any other female gamer. And for that, I am thankful. But if after all of this, you argue with me, if the idea of strong, fully clothed female models upsets you, if you think I'm wrong and that I need to stop talking, or if you think that this is just what it means to be a woman on the internet, you need to sit back and consider how you approach women in the hobby as well as the world at large. The biggest thing that you can do to help is by asking companies where their well-clad female miniatures are. When you see such well-clad female miniatures, buy them or share them on Instagram or send them to people who you think would like to buy them. Continue supporting female crafters and gamers and people in the hobby. And when you see men being inappropriate, just call them out and say, hey, that's not cool. That's what I'm asking for. And if you're interested in helping me in particular, go ahead and see how the conversation is going down in the comments below. Just check in and see if the discussion is going in a productive and healthy direction. Before I wrap this video up, I wanna give a quick shout out to the people who helped me write this script. 
Trent from Miscast, Bill from Berserker Works, my wonderful husband James from Greyhouse Games on Instagram, Raquel from Rax X Art, and Luke from Nerdcraft HQ. Thank you so much for helping me write the script. I really appreciate all of the time and feedback that you offered me. If you want to support me monetarily, go ahead and join me over on Patreon, where you can receive feedback directly from me, join my wonderful, friendly, growing community, and much more. Otherwise, subscribe, go ahead and follow me on Instagram, and buy my merchandise. If you've made it this far, I really appreciate you taking the time to sit and listen to this video. I hope that this was helpful, informative, and inspiring to you. I look forward to seeing you on the next one. I'm wrapping up, honey bun. Yeah, I'm wrapping up for the night. You you already missed it all. I'm cleaning. Oh, are you purring? Oh, yeah, that does not, that does not give you a free pass onto my desk. You think that if you start purring, you'll be allowed on my desk?